good afternoon uh, viewers and uh, listeners of concerned uh, citizens media uh, thank you for uh, joining me again so before uh, before i jump to the uh, breaking news from ethiopia uh, i want to say a little bit of, uh, a little bit updates on the war uh, the first one is the the march toward Debrecena, the city of Debrecena, uh, TDF and uh, Oromo Liberation Army uh, secured Shoarovic, moved to uh, uh, other small towns. Now they are heading to Debrecena. Uh, that city is cornered from different, uh, at least three directions by TDF and uh, OLA forces. So we are watching it. Now the, that's the main, the main military operation. Uh, so uh, if any update coming from that war front, I will let you know. And uh, also you can follow other uh, media outlets for the breaking news. So Debra Sina, next maybe Debra Brahan, also Shua, uh, Awash Arba, uh, so many war fronts plus the uh, Afar region war front to control uh, Mile. Uh, oil also enjoying uh, or you know uh, giving orientation to uh, residents he liberated in Western Wollega uh, uh, area. Uh, thousands and thousands of people came out for this orientation. I don't have that video, but uh, it's uh, circulating in uh, Facebook and other social media. So, uh, you know, he's giving them uh, advice. He's giving them, uh, you know, General Jalmarro giving them the best advice going forward. Number one, to organize themselves and uh, have their own local uh, leadership. And uh, he is warning them to uh, not to engage in looting, stealing uh, public and uh, private property. Very, very interesting, uh, very uh, best advice uh, for the residents liberated by OLA. Also, he is giving them another best advice that uh, not to harm. Uh, you know, other ethnicities living with Oromos for generation. So he's telling them, no, don't do it. This is not the uh, Oromos treat others. So they are with us, you know, they have been with Oromos for generation. So please do not harm any, any residents, uh, uh, you know, originated from other ethnicities. So is uh, advising them to live together, respect each other, stop looting public and private properties, uh, stop, uh, you know, and other uh, atrocities against uh, other uh, individuals uh, from other ethnicities. So that's the best advice. And uh, he also encouraged them to support OLS uh, uh, freedom movement until uh, Oromia, uh, region totally free from prosperity party or other forces, uh, including uh, the bigger picture liberating Ethiopia from tyranny and the prosperity party. So then uh, I say the celebration will be done after all these uh, uh, major objectives are completed, but he is advising them to have their own police force, to have their own uh, judge uh, leadership, uh, other local leaderships, and to secure their communities. And it was uh, uh, very interesting to see happy faces, thousands and thousands of people joining OLA. It's not a terrorist organization like Abi Ahmed and his supporters are, uh, you know, attempting to do in uh, their propaganda. These fighters are welcomed by the community. They are very welcomed. Dancing with them, I have one video at the end, and uh, you know, 
enjoying traditional cultural dance with OLA. So that's it. And uh, the other thing is uh, uh, TDF uh, should be, uh, you know, uh, appreciated. We should appreciate Ethiopians, Ethiopian mothers, Ethiopian fathers, uh, brothers, sisters. They should appreciate TDF uh, for treating those uh, war prisoners in thousands and thousands feeding them, closing them, and, uh, you know, uh, taking care of them, and even allowing them to speak to their sisters, mothers, fathers, and uh, letting, uh, letting them know they are okay. So TDF should be appreciated. That is, you know, following the Geneva uh, Convention, 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 Convention. Uh, Geneva Convention, uh, treating war prisoners with, dis, uh, with respect and with dignity. And uh, I see the video, thousands is uncountable, really. And uh, saving all these lives is not like the one we saw in Amara region or in uh, uh, during the war oppression, you know, how the TDF captives were treated by Fanos, Amara militia, and Ethiopian and Eritrean soldiers. So that's a wrong way. That's a wrong way. You know, uh, this, you know, Ethiopians, Eritreans, they're supposed to know the Geneva Convention, but they treated them very badly. Uh, even shooting at the dead soldiers shooting at the dead soldiers. That's horrible, horrible model, horrible sample. So we should, we should appreciate TDF for saving all these lives and, uh, you know, allowing them to have, uh, you know, to say they are okay to their families, relatives, and friends. So that's, uh, I really appreciate it, and uh, they should continue respecting the Geneva Convention, treat them with uh, dignity. That's why they are uh, winning, actually. They are winning the military conflict and uh, the prop propaganda campaign against uh, Abiy Ahmed and uh, Abiy Ahmed supporters, uh, despite all the finance the Ethiopian government getting from, uh, you know, Ethiopians at home and abroad, despite all the uh, protests all over the, the globe. But TDF is winning uh, because they know the strategy, the military strategy, the propaganda strategy, and they know how to treat, how to treat the war prisoners. So that's uh, my uh, concerned citizens media comment on that one. Uh, it's not a simple thing. Uh, you know, these people are trained, financed, and sent to rape Tigrayan women, to kill Tigrayans, to eliminate them from the earth. But they are well treated, despite all that, uh, all that uh, message. You see them on the media, Ethiopian media, before they captured by TDF. They were saying, we will eliminate TDF. We will eliminate, uh, you know, these forces from the earth, despite all this propaganda. But they treated them after they captured these thousands and the thousands of soldiers. So, you know, Ethiopia media try to use some homeless people or uh, economically depraved people, showing us like a captives. They don't look like they are military captives. These are girls and women look like homeless. They are not even, I don't know, they are, even, they are not even Tigrans. They don't like Tigrans. They are not look like army or soldiers, you know, captured in the military. Field. They got them from somewhere and uh, to try to win a uh, propaganda war. So. After I say that, let's see, let's start the breaking news from Ethiopia. Uh, 
uh, this breaking news is about the Prime Minister. Uh, thanks to Addis Standard, I just got this one. Uh, Prime Minister Abi to lead army from front lines as of tomorrow. This is a breaking news. Prime Minister Abi Ahmed today announced uh, that he will join the front uh, tomorrow in a social media post shared this evening. Abi said it is time to lead the country through sacrifices. I will join the front to lead the defense forces tomorrow. Calling on Ethiopians, the Prime Minister said, those of you who aspire to be remembered in history, rise up for your country. Meet me at the front, Abi assured that the administrative vacuum will be filled by federal and regional officials who will work harder than ever to their fullest capacity to carry out administrative and development activities. In his message addressing the people of Ethiopia, Abi vowed to fend off internal and external enemies who he accused of attempting to build their strengths on Ethiopia's weakness. He said, Ethiopia's plan was to move forward together without abandoning anyone, the Prime Minister said, adding, that is why we focused our foreign policy on our neighbors. He continued, this struggle is the struggle of all black people. The campaign against Ethiopia is a conspiracy to undermine the history, culture, identity, and the dignity of black people and humiliate them by subduing their symbol of freedom, Ethiopia. He further called on all black people to stand by Ethiopia in a spirit of pan-Africanism. There is no time left to criticize from afar, the Prime Minister said, adding, let us do what must be done ourselves. We are all that Ethiopia has. He concluded his message by reiterating his commitment the name Ethiopia is the name of winners. It is a symbol of freedom. I have no doubt that my generation will pay the price in its name and write, write its victory in gold. So that's very, very uh, inspiring, very strong dedication from Prime Minister Abi Yamad, uh, you know, ready to sacrifice for Ethiopia. And uh, we will see uh, if he's uh, really uh, doing it. And uh, doing it, uh, maybe he will be one of the captives, one of the thousands of captives already uh, in TDF hands. So he's also. Uh, calling on uh, Africans, Africans to join the Ethiopian civil war. They say this is, you know, to erase history. The Africa, you know, never been, uh, Ethiopia never been colonized. The only two countries, Ethiopia and Liberia. So this is an attempt to erase history. He's calling on pan-Africanism. And, uh, you know, this uh, was used in the past. It was a strong, I don't know if anyone is listening from Africa uh, joining, except uh, Obasanjo uh, going around for uh, uh, dialogue. So we'll see if they're gonna uh, hear this call. Uh, but there is an attempt. Uh, I also uh, read a news from uh, Mayor Adane Chabebe uh, calling this is war. This war is not Ethiopia's war. This is war is Africa's war. Africans must join. So, 
you know that message that Adana Chabibe's message was coming from Prime Minister Rabi. That's uh, that's why you know you hear it today. So we will see, we will follow it. Is he uh, joining the army? He said from the front, but he could be like Fanos from behind and uh, using gun and uh, his uh, force, you know, to force Oromo and uh, others coming came from different region and uh, like Fano did in the past. Fano was behind anybody who, you know, threatened at the front line, you know, can't, can't retreat because Fano is uh, uh, using uh, heavy artillery from behind, forcing them. So we'll see, that's the breaking news from Ethiopia and the uh, Prime Minister is ready to lead the war at the front and uh, to sacrifice, as he said before. Uh, we'll follow it, okay. Uh, the next one is uh, a very strong response from Ethiopian civil aviation on the statement uh, made by U.S. Aviation Administration in the past about uh, all planes coming to Poly International uh, Airport and leaving from Poly International Airport to be cautious about artillery fire. So this is a response to that. U.S. Federal Aviation Administration statement on Ethiopia face opposition. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration has issued a statement saying that Ethiopia commercial pilots could be hit by a rocket-propelled grenade, which is completely illegal and irresponsible. A senior government official contacted by the reporter said the government would not be on the list because it would make an official statement. But the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration is not responsible for making such a statement. He also condemned the act saying it does not take into account the current situation in Ethiopia. Such an irresponsible act is part of the destruction of Ethiopia, he said. Even if there is a problem, such a statement will be issued by the International Civil Aviation Authority, not in public, but in private. This is because US airlines like United and Delta do not fly to Ethiopia, he said. It is also not responsible for issuing warning to African, European, and Asian airlines flying to Ethiopia. In general, it is intended to intimidate Ethiopians and their friends, he said. In a statement posted on his Twitter account on Friday, November 10, uh, 2014, Ethiopian ambassador to the United States, Fisum Aragga, condemned the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration statement. He described the statement as unethical and irresponsible and said it was outrageous and out of line. Many Ethiopians who took to a Twitter to protest the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration's statement said the United States was fabricating lies against Ethiopia. They are threatening to impose sanctions on the Ethiopian people, he said. They have started a psychological warfare by depriving Ethiopia of the benefits of Agua. Addis Ababa is under the control of the rebels. They say they cannot evacuate like a cabal. They are launching an incessant, in an incessant propaganda war through their media to terrorize our people searching. 
former president of the Addis Ababa Chamber of Commerce, Brahane Mua, said intimidation of countries is prohibited worldwide. Even though we are poor, we must have the courage to ask why in this field of diplomacy. Threats and a series of statements indicating that the United States plans to physically attack Ethiopia as well as uh, to directly or indirectly change regime. This is the last thing we Ethiopians expect from the United States. Others, outraged by the U.S. threats, also called on the Ethiopian government to seek immediate re, uh, to seek immediate redress from the United States. He reiterated that the U.S. ambassador should be summoned and briefed on his government's actions. Meanwhile, the Ethiopian Civil Aviation Authority said all flights to Addis Ababa, Bole International Airport, and any Ethiopian airspace are safe and secure. He said the rumors that there are threats to Ethiopian airlines are baseless and that both the airport and the airlines are completely safe. So that's a very, very strong uh, statement against the United States and uh, defending uh, Ethiopia. Ethiopia civil aviation is safe and secure and uh, under the control of the government. So there is no threat. That's what they try to say. And uh, they are, uh, you know, threatening uh, U.S. and uh, blaming U.S. for uh, sending out that statement. Okay. Ethiopia caution countries pursuing own foreign policy in the name of aid to refrain. This is another warning. In her routine presser to state media, State Minister of Government Communication Service Salamait Kasa said this morning that the government has warned some countries pursuing their own foreign policy in the name of aid to refrain from doing so state-owned EBC reported. The state minister further said that Ethiopians living abroad and the friends of Ethiopia have rallied worldwide opposing foreign intervention in the country. Furthermore, Salamait urged Ethiopians living abroad and those of Ethiopian this descent to transfer money using legal channels. Initiatives shown so far by the diaspora to support Ethiopia is commendable, she further said. Commenting on agricultural activities, the state minister said that an estimated 1.5 million hectares of land in five zones of Amara regional state was either destroyed or was not cultivated due to the ongoing security problems in the region. In order to compensate for the loss, the government is exer exerting various efforts to help the areas where security is not posing problems to work with special focus. According to Salamite, the government is uh, working to achieve input from the agricultural sector by, by covering 13 million hectares of land and harvesting 374.5 million quintals of produce in order to cover domestic consumption for the year 2020 to 2021. With regard to the economy of the 169.4 million US dollar plant, Earning in the last four months, 157.4 million US dollar was obtained, showing an increase of 24% compared to the same period last year. Increase? Okay, that's question, questionable. 
Following the U.S. government's plan to remove Ethiopia from AGWA privileges, the government is exerting effort to shift textile and garment products exporting to countries in Asia, especially China and uh, India, as well as African countries. Okay, at this standard credited for that one. Okay, the next, this one is about the consequence of war in Amara region. That's uh, hashtag Ethiopia rebuilding region would take at least 30 years. Recovering from the severe economic damage inflicted by the war in the northern Ethiopia and bringing back the economy of Amara regional state to pre-Tigray war economic status would take 30 to 40 years of endeavor revealed an assessment by the planning commission of the Amara regional state. 30 to 40 years to bring back the economy pre-Tigray war level. The regional GDP con constitutes 22% of the national GDP, which stood at US dollar 100 billion when the law enforcement operation began in Tigray Regional State in November 2020. Kombolcha was the industrial hub of the region. Now every standing factory has been looted by TPLA forces. They damaged properties they could not take. Private and public investments are totally damaged. We cannot even resume providing minimum services such as health and schools in the near future because they have been completely damaged and looted. Head of the Regional Planning Commission, Animut Bellet said of condition. So that is one side, only the cost of uh, uh, property damage uh, due to the conflict. Nobody knows the estimate for human life, the cost of human life, and other uh, emotional distress associated with uh, this conflict. And uh, uh, concerned citizens in media warned even before the start of the war, because uh, I was watching how the prime minister was acting against TDF, against the uh, uh, TPLF at the time, they were cooking the war with a, with a visit to Asmara multiple times and Asmara visit to Addis Ababa multiple times, removing uh, TPLF officials from federal, uh, you know, federal administration. So all those was cook, cooking, not only the November incident, just before that the cutting of the budget, isolating TPLF. This happened before the war. And uh, I was warning our um, my listeners at the time. I know the war was coming at the time. So now that war is costing the Amara region 30 to 40 years to recover. Plus all the human uh, life cost, all the emotional distress, all the displacements, but nobody was listening at the time. Nobody was listening, concerned citizens media and other media's warning not to go to war and the end the war. They didn't listen. They were singing, jumping, getting ready to fight. Now they got the prize. Now, now still, they, don't le they didn't learn the lesson. They are still jumping around ready to sacrifice more lives, demonstrating around the globe, chanting all uh, you know, their propaganda against international media, calling international media fake news, all kind of stuff, financing, sending dollars, but they are not winning at the war front. Okay, this is, uh, yeah, this is also about, this is a, Another one about the protesters. This is from Fusum Araga. 
So Maraga Twitter account, he said, and Adanek Abebe also tweeted about these protesters. Even the prime minister tweeted, uh, you know, everyone in the prosperity party are happy to see uh, all these uh, red, green, yellow flags and all these uh, expressions against the United States and against the international media. They are happy. But at the flag they are carrying is the wrong one. It's not the flag Abiy Ahmed is carrying at this time. All the flags, except few, carrying the federal flag. Most of them, they have just flat, red, green, yellow. That's not Ethiopian flag. It's not official flag of Ethiopia at this time. So they are contradicting Abiy Ahmed in another sense. I don't know if he's secretly supporting that thing, but that is in contradiction to Ethiopia's official flag. So if his flag, yeah, if it come to ne negotiating table in the future, Ethiopians will decide if they want to take this one or the federal flag or if they want to create another flag. So at this time, this is not official flag, but most of them, most of the protesters in Canada, Seattle, Washington, St. Louis, Missouri, and uh, other European countries, Los Angeles, they are carrying uh, Eritrean flags and uh, this red, green, yellow flag. So let's see what he said. This is Fusum Aragaha, US uh, Ethiopian ambassador at USA. A historic and uh, momentous day in hashtag Ethiopia diaspora. Tens of thousands in 27 cities around the world came out as one community to show solidarity for Ethiopia unity, sovereignty, and dignity. We stand as one. Today, diaspora Ethiopians made history by roaring out hashtag no more. Kudos to all. That's uh, Ambassador Fistum Araga's tweet. Happy, delighted by this uh, anti-USA, anti-international media, and uh, pro-genocide protesters. Pro-genocide protesters. They are blindly supporting Prosperity Party, which is a failed leadership in Ethiopia. But they are still supporting it. They don't care. So some of the slogans these protesters carry uh, are the following. Africa, stand with Ethiopians. Africa, stand with Ethiopians and Ethiopia. That was the message from Adanich Abebe, mayor of Addis Ababa. So they are, uh, you know, echoing the same message. African affairs for Africans, no interference. No more undermining democracy in Ethiopia. Do we have democracy in Ethiopia? You guys, you protesters, really? <laughs> our leaders are our leaders are our choices. Our leaders are our choices. Yes, your choices, but they are affecting others. That's why others are fighting against them. You don't care those uh, thousands in jail. You don't care about uh, the ongoing war in Wollega for almost three years. You don't care all this. And uh, you care about those criminals uh, holding the power. Just they changed the name. They didn't change their characters. They were opidios and uh, all these uh, uh, parties worked in, uh, you know, in power in the last 27 plus three years. So they just changed into uh, prosperity names, but they didn't change their characters. So, so they, these protesters are in general, they are pro-Abi. They don't care whatever he did. 
you know, whatever he assassinated, whatever he arrested in thousands, including Oromo political leaders and uh, others, they don't care. They don't care. They want to reserve his seat. They don't care. So there are anti-international media, anti-US protesters. And uh, we, will, we will see if they're going to be successful in keeping these uh, criminals in power. Sudan's Hamdok says he returned to safeguard economic gains. Sudan's Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok said on Monday that maintaining the economic gains from the past two years was among the reasons he had decided to return to his post under a deal with the military nearly a month after he was removed in a coup. In an interview with Reuters at the Khartoum residence, where he had been held under house arrest following October 25 military takeover, Hamdok said he believed a, a technocratic government he, he is expected to appoint would, be, would have a chance to improve living standards. Prominent political parties and the Sudan's powerful protest movement have opposed Hamdok's decision to sign the agreement with the military on Sunday with some calling it a betrayal or saying it provided political cover for the coup. Among the reasons for my return is preserving the economic gains and the economic opening to the world, Hamdok said. Since Hamdok was first appointed prime minister in 2019 under a power-sharing deal following the overthrow of Umar al-Bashir, Sudan has carried out economic reforms, including the lifting of fuel subsidies and uh, a managed float of its currency. The reform, mon monitored by the International Monetary Fund, won Sunday approval for forgiveness on much of it is more than 50 billion in foreign debt, a deal that was thrown a deal that was thrown into doubt by the coup. The World Bank and some bilateral donors posed badly needed economic assistance after the military takeover. We will continue our contacts with international financial institutions and the new budget that will begin in January will proceed on the path of economic reform and open the door to investment in Sudan, Hamdok said. So Hamdok is back in power in the last week and uh, some still opposing him for joining the military coup, but they should uh, figure out uh, to, you know, uh, to make Sudan stable for Sudanese. Fatal, te fatal terrorist attack in Jerusalem Old City. This is very, very short press statement by U.S. State Department. We strongly condemn the terrorist attack uh, occurred yesterday by Hamas gunman in Jerusalem Old City, which killed one person and injured others. We offer our condolences to the victims and their families. So that's a very short statement from U.S. State Department on yesterday's terrorist attack in uh, Jerusalem's old city. That's a, that area is very sensitive. Uh, the United States and others are watching. That's why one person injured, uh, one person did uh, more injured even one. So they're very serious, very sensitive, very uh, volatile area. That's why you see the United States act quickly and condemn it very strongly. This is Lebanon's National Day. This is also a press statement from U.S. State Department. On behalf of the United States of America, uh, Anthony J. Blinken extend 
extend my heartfelt best wish to the people of Lebanon on their Independence Day. The United States recognize, recognizes both the rich culture and the preservance of the Lebanese people who have faced and overcome many challenges over the past 78 years. During these trying times, the United States will continue to stand by the people of Lebanon and support their hopes for a better future. So that is the end of today's uh, news reading. Thank you again. Let's share some videos and end today's presentation. There we go. Okay. It was a murder trial that divided a nation, and so was the verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant, Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. It was the same on all five charges, from reckless endangerment to first-degree murder. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Outside the courthouse, for some, there was another verdict. This was not self-defense. This was not the appropriate use of deadly force. It was wrong. It happened on a hot August night last year during a clash of protesters and counter-protesters. The violent response to the police shooting of a black man, Jacob Blake. Some on both sides were armed. The facts were undisputed. Kyle Rittenhouse, armed with an assault rifle, fatally shot two protesters and wounded a third. In tearful testimony, the 18-year-old called it self-defense. I did what I had to do to stop the person who was attacking me. The jury spent four days deliberating, then agreed. Members of the jury, are these your unanimous verdicts? Is there anyone who does not agree with the verdicts as read? Do you wish the jury pulled? Okay. With that, it ended more than a year later on a cold November afternoon to the satisfaction of gun rights advocates. It validates that we have a Second Amendment right to defend ourselves and protect ourselves. The case has been a national Rorschach test. The verdict, no less so. Gun rights advocates see vindication. Black Lives Matter members see unequal justice for black and white Americans. The politically and racially charged trial was watched across the U.S. The verdict supported at the highest level. I stand by what the jury has concluded. The jury system works and we have to abide by it. For Jacob Blake's uncle, the verdict marks one more case of systematic racial injustice. That's ridiculous. Self-defense is somebody in the house doing you wrong. In the streets of Kenosha, residents brace themselves, hoping the violent clashes of 2020 aren't repeated in 2021. John Hendren, Al Jazeera, Kenosha, Wisconsin. We continue to follow breaking news out of a Milwaukee suburb. What was supposed to be a happy and fun-filled Christmas parade has turned deadly. In Waukesha, a driver plowed through the barricade and hit dozens of people both marching and watching. NBC 5's Lisa Chavaria live in Waukesha for us this morning. Lisa, any information on how many people were hit? Well, Michelle and Patrick, police are telling us more than 40 people were injured in this and at least five people were killed. That's the latest number so far that we have. But I want to show you Main Street. You can still see that it remains blocked off this morning. This was where that parade route went along while police are continuing to collect evidence. And here's the thing. We are not going to show you the vehicle hitting those in the parade, but we still want to warn you this video is disturbing. <coughs> You can hear the screams of the people just reacting to this. Now, that was the moment when the driver of that red SUV drove right through a marching band at the 
Waukesha holiday parade, people were confused and then devastated by what they saw. They were happy just moments earlier, celebrating the parade's return after a year hiatus because of the pandemic. Then that vehicle got onto the parade route about 4.30 yesterday afternoon. We had a chance to speak with a witness who saw at least one person hit by that SUV. It continued straight down. So the, um, the parade route goes straight down Main Street. The vehicle came past our location, hit the pedestrian, hit the float, and continued going straight down the parade route. They had a straight shot um, all the way um, from where they entered the route um, until where they exited. Waukesha police say a person of interest is in custody, but the chief didn't give any additional details about that person or a possible motive. However, four senior law enforcement officials who spoke to NBC News say the incident may have stemmed from a knife fight or a stabbing that happened a bit earlier, and then that person took off. Then we're back out here live. Uh, in Waukesha. This is leading up to Main Street. You can see uh, another uh, police vehicle has pulled up there. Now, the police chief had mentioned that the number of those injured could change. The reason why he has been saying that is because uh, a lot of people were taken to hospitals in lots of different ways, from ambulances to police squad cars to even family and friends rushing people that they loved and cared about uh, to try to get them that help that they needed. So again, more than 40 people injured, at least five killed. Okay. So that's, uh, be careful about such unexpected uh, situations uh, on this Thanksgiving and uh, on coming holidays. This is such horrible, unexpected situation. So I have one more video then. Uh, okay, let's see. There you go, let me see. Uh -oh. Uh, I apologize for taking the conditions. There you go. There you go. This is the one I was talking before. Uh, oil fighters you know, enjoying with the residents a free from tyranny and uh, atrocities uh, from Abi Ahmed prosperity parties. That's Jan Marro. See how they join the soldiers? prefer uh, oil to lead us, to govern us, that's what they say. Uh, how you call this force is terrorist? How you call it? What is terrorist? This is a terrorist, the people who reject them, they are not. They are part and parcel of the society. Okay. 
Okay, that's uh, OLA fighters uh, enjoying with the residents they freed and uh, they are welcomed by uh, residents as heroes, not as a terrorist, as the, you know, the government of Ethiopia are telling us uh, these are uh, these OLA fighters are fighting for the freedom of Oromos. They are part and parcel of the society. They are not terrorists at the government. Blame them. Uh, they are enjoying. They are welcomed by the society. So let me conclude uh, today's uh, presentation. Uh, I will conclude the, with the breaking news I, I read. Uh, Abi Ahmed, he sent all teenagers uh 14 15 16 he sent all seniors he called on seniors to join he sent mothers he sent uh, daughters he even used all the militia from uh, different regions he used Eritrean forces he used uh uae drones russians maybe iran turkey uh russian advisors uh even one report is suggesting russian might be uh might be involving in a direct military conflict uh in the future but it's not confirmed yet but that's a very serious one so he used even the diaspora community to fight this war. All is unsuccessful. All failed, losing ground because there is no truth on his side. There is no truth on his side. Now, now he is heading himself to that war front and we will watch it. We will see if that can bring any difference if he's really uh, armed himself and uh, uh, engage in the conflict we're gonna see it uh, we don't want to see the you know the camera shot now you have to keep your promise you have to say what you have to do what you said we want to see you at the war front fight thing face to face with oil with tdf and the sacrifice uh just like those youngsters you sent before those seniors you sent before so we are watching it and uh we will see how he uh keep his promise and i will report to you so i will be back with other updates and uh, please be careful with unexpected holiday situations that we watch on the news. Thanksgiving is 
on the way, Christmas is on the way, New Year's, please celebrate uh, the, you know, the holidays with caution, uh, watch your surrounding, uh, some, you know, act uh, irresponsibly. So please watch your surrounding, enjoy the holidays. I will be back with other news. Be safe. So long, everyone.